Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Ah! Well, <clears throat> welcome back to the channel. All you Cody hackers and all you new subscribers, thanks for joining us here and stopping in. Um, I've been doing a project this week. It don't have a lot to do. Well, it don't have anything to do with outboards. But, um, it's been a pretty big project. Dealing with the weather, the rain and all and everything, and then trying to do this out here in the in the front of the shop and everything. It gives fret something to laugh at and stuff make fun of and, you know stuff like that but anyway I uh, I started this project I'm gonna show you what it is and then uh, there for certain will be some outboards uh, in the video and uh, stuff like that and I'll show you what that is and, and uh, but yeah it's been a, a pretty big project but one I've been wanting to get done and so I started on it and like most projects you start they end up being a lot more complicated than what you thought they might be you've been there you've done that right yeah so let's look at it Whoa, yeah, this is my 2003 Chevy Astro van, and as you can see, I jerketed the rear end out from under it. The rear end, the front seal was leaking, and the rear end was shot. It was making a, a really bad growling noise, and, and so I went to a uh, salvage yard and got me a different one, and... Uh, you know, when you buy from a salvage yard, you don't really know what you're getting. They told me that it came out of a vehicle that had 83,000 miles on it that was wrecked to the front. Whatever that's worth. But uh, this van, it runs good and uh, really good. And it's got all the bells and whistles. Piece of cake. That's how you get it off. There's my puller. That's the part I needed. I was taking off this yoke, which I'm going to need to show you what I got going. Ooh, does that look fun? Yeah. The old rear end swap. 
There's the replacement rear. Supposed to be good, but you know how that goes. Anyway, that's what we got going. Fun. 2003 Chevy Astro Van Rear End. Oh, yeah. So I got the old rear end out from under it. Ooh. I flew over to Anchorage, Alaska, and threw my stepson and stepdaughter. Um, I was able to buy this. Oh man, my back hurts. Yeah. Ugh. You ever took a rear end out of an old 2003 Astro van? Ouch! But I'm getting there. I think I am. I've wired wheeled. I've sanded and wire brushed and oh my. But um, in between the rain and the fog and the misty, I'm starting to get there. Yay! Yippee! So my other van, my 1996, it, uh, it runs good and all, but it don't have any bells and whistles, uh, no electric windows, none of that stuff. It does have electric locks, but that's about it. And it has drum rear brakes and 15-inch uh, tires. And the 2006 has all-wheel disc brakes on it. So, that's what I've been kind of doing. And uh, there's the replacement rear end. I just put a brand new front seal in it and everything. And then I've got to get a uh, gasket for the pumpkin cover. And... I just, I've been putting coats of paint on the pup cover, and I got this all wire wheeled and painted, and I've got my uh, rotors all cleaned up and painted. So that's what I've been doing. There's the, the yoke and everything that I need to put back in, and there's the old hubs over there that came or yeah brake rotors hubs that came off of this one and so it's been a project for sure well you know what it means when I wear this hat it means somebody came bearing the gifts they sure did so, it's Christmas, 
in June. Let's look. Well, there's the first one. It's a Zuki. Heck. I don't even know what horsepower it is. Oh, there it is. Is that the tag? No. There it is. Zuki. 25. So, yeah, DT25. I was looking to see if it had the year on it, but it don't. But it's been sitting in a guy's garage, he said, for years, and he wanted it out of there. And it was a friend of his, and the friend of his finally said, Go take it down to Cody Bass. He'll take it. So, it'll probably unstick them. Um, but if you can see, he scribbled on there with a paint pen, 50 to 1 mix. And that's that's good. I may have done this. That that looks like something I might have done. Um, because if you look right here, you can see what that sticker says. A hundred to one. So I've probably worked on the motor before, because I generally. We'll write that on there and X out the 100 to 1. Don't run your two cycle outboards on 101. That was done as a last ditch effort for these outboard companies that were building the two strokes to meet the 2006 emission standards. So they just printed up a bunch of little stickers. That's what they did. Okay, let's look at the next one. Oh yeah, there's more than one. And this is a beaut. Look at this thing here. Johnson 30. Um, what year are we? I can almost see the sticker. It's a 1990 short shaft 30. The guy said he hasn't run it for the last seven years, but it ran when he put it away. Look at that beautiful uh, stainless prop and that skeg guard. Isn't that neat? I'll zoom in on that a little bit for you. It's got a nice skeg guard on there. Stainless steel prop. Shorty 30. 1990. Isn't that a beaut? Most of these 90 ones that come in here, the paint will be in way worse shape than that. <laughs> but the paint on that one's not too bad. But the, the fella that gave me this one. He, he's known for taking good care of his stuff. So that's a beautiful little kicker there. And short shafts, anything above 15 horsepower in my neck of the woods, um, they're hard to come by around here. Um, we have mostly long shafts. Um, you know, you can get the short shaft 15s and down, but getting over 15 horsepower and the short shafts kind of hard to do around here. But she's a cutie. And here's the third one. Yes, there's a third one. A little four short shaft Yamaha. With the built-in fuel tank. Um, nice little kicker. Turns over just fine. 
A friend of mine gave me this one. That is leaving the island. Moving to Wisconsin. Um, after living here for over 50 years. And he's had this for several years. He said used it a couple times. And said I'm leaving it yours. And then along with it. He even gave me. The brand new cutie little. How cute is that? How cute is that? He gave me the brand new little propeller. That goes with it. So. It was Christmas. In June. Well, well. Actually, this is the calm before the storm. <laughs> is what they're telling me. Um, Kodiak Island right now for the next four days is under a severe flood warning. Not from the specific ocean. From the amount of rain. Yeah. And we've been getting lots. <laughs> And lots and lots and even more lots but yeah she's a little on the nasty side if you watch my videos you'll know that this is right out behind my house that's Woody over Woody Island over there through the fog boy it's been a wet wet summer so far just huge amounts of rain but sometimes that's summer in Kodiak the temperature right now is about 41 degrees I'm keeping my camera printed this way mostly so the lens don't get completely soaked but yeah the wind's supposed to pick up to 30 and out that way towards seattle a couple thousand miles he's nothing but frog now isn't that kind of interesting you see that culvert pipe <laughs> ain't no water coming out of it but right beside it yeah, we're getting some water. Yeehaw! Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Oh yeah. And when we get this amount of water like this, I'll show you some other stuff. Well, there goes the lens. <laughs> This is right here, what they call Dead Man's Curve. Now when we get that water just comes plummeting down, this old shale rock will let loose like that. And a lot of times it'll come off there in such amounts that it blocks the road and they have to bring dozers out. And Scrape it out. But that's what happens when that water gets to flowing just in huge amounts. That old shale, volcanic rock and stuff will just let loose. And when that happens, it just happens. See this ship right here? The Atlantis. Woods Hole. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. You might be familiar with this boat. 
in that hangar right in there this boat is up here and this is the boat that tends the deep sea submersible submersible Alvin and they're doing some deep sea underwater research here around Kodiak and Alvin's in that hangar right there and they're gonna the pilots are supposed to fly in here in the next day the pilots who pilot Alvin down and so forth so hopefully I'll be able to get some pictures of Alvin at some point but that's the boat and that's Alvin bow of the Atlantis good looking ship Yeah, they're going to launch the Alvin somewhere out there. a shower once every other month whether you need it or not and there's your hack okay um just wanted to give you an update on some of the stuff I've had going around here in between what little spurts of uh, let's just say better weather that I have I really want to get that van uh, rear end in there and buttoned up and and I've got some other projects I'm going to do on that particular van um, and then I wanted to show you that the outboards just to keep coming um, people just keep gifting them to me so I guess that's not a bad problem to have huh Well, now, in my uh, last video, I think, I showed you my boat, my Bay Runner skiff with my DT-40 Zuki on there. And a couple subscribers commented and said, man, man, that old DT-40 must be a, a booger to pull start. Yeah, it is. It is. But, I want out my conics. Where I keep a lot of my lecticoro parts. And I sniffed around, took a look around. And I found this. And this is off of Suzuki DT 55. But I looked up some parts numbers and all. And it looks like it will fit right on that DT 40. But this ain't what's important. This. This. Is what's very important. This bracket. You think the brackets for the uh, 
OMC 1825s, 30. You think them starter brackets are hard to come by. This. But I got one. Because I saved it off that DT-55. But what I didn't have, which is even harder to find, is this. See them tephases? You see them tooths? Them tooths? Them tephas? I've been looking for quite a while. This is off a of DT-40 that had electric start and pull start. And I've been looking for this guy for a while. And I finally found it on old ePay. There it is. The one. So now, with that group of parts and a starter button or a key switch or whatever I decide to go with, I will put electric start on my D. Just thinking about it. Pretty soon it's going to be. <gasps> so, and if there's some of you guys running these Zookies, older generation, 88, 89, right in there, 90, um, DT two strokers, maybe you can set me straight on this. I think they already have the rect the lightering coil up under the flywheel for rectifying and, and sending charge to the battery. I think it's already on these. I think I, I mean I've even seen the little the little ones if I can remember right that are you know just little pull start nine nines. I would take off the flywheel or whatnot and it would be there. So. If you know for sure, let me know. Um, but I'll find out when I pull that uh, fly, flywheel off there. So, But I think it's already there. So the only other component I should need would be uh, a start button. And like I pointed out in my last video, I need to put a man overboard switch on that DT40 anyway, the one that's on there. The factory one quit working. Um, so I'm probably going to put a... Sea Dog, I think they call it. Sea Dog? I got some up, up there somewhere, and if not, I certainly got some out there. Um, I'll put one of them on there, and uh, I think I might even have a Sea Dog set up that has the man overboard and key switch. I'll have to look. But I've got OMC key switches. I've also got the buttons, and uh, so we're going to get set up on that. Well, this video is probably getting a little bit long and uh, if nothing else you can take your hat from old Billy Ray when the weather's like it is have fun with it anyway. That's your hack. So I thank you for watching and as always that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Out Boards with your host, Cody Bass.